The next myth is regarding memory effects. And that myth concerns the assertion that the loss of locality in a microkernel-based design is much more than in a monolithic structure or the structure that is advocated in spin and exokernel. But before we talk about the memory effects, there's a primer on the memory hierarchy. You know that in the processor architecture, you have the CPU, you have the TLB, and you have several levels of caches, main memory, and the virtual memory that resides on the disk. And these caches are typically physically tagged. Now, what do we mean by memory effects? What we mean by that is, if you have this hardware address space, and this, of course, is much bigger than the amount of space that's available in these caches. And in fact, we know that the entire hardware address space may not even be in physical memory because in a demand page system, when a process is executing, the pages that it needs may be demand paged from the virtual memory that's on the disk and brought into physical memory. And when the processor is executing instructions, then the instructions and data contained in physical memory move into the memory hierarchy close to the CPU so that the CPU can access the working set of the currently running thread by getting it from the cache that is closest to it. That's the hope in this memory hierarchy. What we mean by memory effects is when we context switch between protection domains, how warm are the caches? Now recall that if we have small protection domains, P1, P2, P3, P4, let's say they're all small protection domains. In that case, lead case suggestion is don't put each of these in its own hardware address space. Pack them together in the same hardware address space and enforce protection for these processes from one another through segment registers. So when we have small protection domains, then the caches are going to be pretty warm. Even when you do a context switch from one process to another process, there's a good chance that the cache hierarchy is going to contain the working set of the newly scheduled small protection domain. So in other words, the memory effects can be mitigated by carefully structuring the protection domains in the hardware address space. So debunking the second myth with respect to address space switching also helps in reducing the ill effects of implicit costs associated with address space switching because these small protection domains occupy only a small memory footprint and therefore occupy only a small memory footprint in the caches as well. And therefore, when we go across small protection domains, there's a good chance that the locality for the newly scheduled small protection domain is going to be contained in the cache hierarchy. So the caches are probably going to be warm when we do context switches, so long as the protection domains are small. We already mentioned that if the protection domains are large, you cannot avoid that. Whether it is a monolithic kernel or the exokernel or the spin type of extensibility, if the memory footprint of the system service is so big, it is going to pollute the cache when we visit that particular system service. So even if we have a monolithic kernel and the monolithic kernel has subsystems that occupy a significant portion of the hardware address space, even though we are not doing any context switch, the ill effects of implicit costs in the memory hierarchy is going to be felt because the caches, after all, are physically tagged and therefore when we go from large protection domains or large subsystems in the context of a monolithic kernel, you have to incur the cache pollution. So that ill effect is unavoidable for large protection domains. So the only place where a monolithic kernel can win or an exokernel can win or a spin can win is in small protection domains. And a microkernel can also win for small protection domain by packing multiple small protection domains in the same hardware address space. So this begs the question, why was it so bad in Mach? 
recall I mentioned that in Mark, on the same hardware, border crossing cost 800 more cycles compared to the border crossing in the L3 microkernel. So we can ask the question, why was it so bad in the Mark microkernel? 